Hello, and thank you for joining me on this podcast from filmsbychris.com. I'm Chris. That's Chris with a K. Uh, so is the website, filmsbychris.com. Uh, be sure to check out my website. And uh, today I'm just going to talk to you a little bit, and hopefully you'll stick around and listen. Uh, what I'm going to talk about today is um, what is impressive uh, and in different aspects. Uh, I'm not a huge gamer. Uh, if you've watched my videos and my podcast in the past, obviously you know I'm a huge uh, Doom fan. I love Doom. Back in the day, I used to love Doom, Duke Nukem 3D, and Quake. I used to modify all three of them, edit them, create my own levels, and really, it was really a good stepping stone for me to getting into programming and game design. Uh, and although I'm not a big gamer, I do like making games, just small games for fun. I enjoy it. Looking at games back then, they are fairly simple in design because the machines were limited and uh, gaming in that aspect was still relatively new. You look at games nowadays, it is amazing. Uh, it is so impressive that real-time rendering uh, on these game consoles and if you have good hardware, you can, it's, it's like lifelike these games. Uh, it's just amazing uh, and it's inspiring in some ways and incredible. Uh, and impressive, but in some ways I find the older games more impressive, uh, more inspiring. Uh, and again, this it's just different views on, on and what you mean by that. As I said, back in the 90s I used to play and edit and create my own levels and mods and graphics and sounds and even music for Doom, Quake, and Duke Nukem 3D, and uh, I used to be able to go to the arcade at the mall or just play games on, you know, PlayStation or whatever game console was out then at a friend's house and and be able to look at it and I was like and although they the graphics were not as impressive as today, I found them more inspiring. And let me say tell you what I mean by that. I would look at them and I would go, Wow, this is a good game. And I understand how everything's created. Like a lot of back then, games, 3D games, like car racing games. I think of they they use a lot of 2D sprites. I think they still do to this day. If you if you can find a car racing or motorcycle racing game, where they even have snowmobile games at these arcades, they still use a lot of 2D sprites for stuff. You know, the girl waving the flag. I forget what game it was back in the day. I don't know if it was a Need for Speed. I don't think it was a Need for Speed. I think it was it was one that you would see in arcades. But I think there was a version for the console at home. Again, I, I never owned one, but I would play it at a friend's house or at the arcade where uh, you would have like cows and if you went off the road, you would hit a cow and it would splatter on your windshield. And that and the trees and the signs were all 2D sprites, but the, the, the level, the ground and the car were, were 3D uh, object, 3D meshes. But I would be able to look at those and because I had done some 3D design uh, in, in Quake, creating characters uh, and objects, and I did 2D stuff in, in, in things like Doom. So when I would look at these games in the arcade or on the consoles, you know, made by professionals, I would look at them and be like, I could do that. You know, a lot of these older games, especially Doom, only had like four guys really working on it. They had a few other guys doing, you know, the sounds and, and the music, but the, the game design, the level design, the programming, it was basically four guys, which is amazing to me that they were able to create a game like that, just the four of them in a room somewhere. And, and it just inspired me. I, I can do this. I've created stuff like this before. I'd look at the ar arcade games. I'm like, I, if I wanted to, I could create it. And it would inspire me. I'd go home and I'd start working. I never really finished any of these games, but I'd be able to go home and start creating, oh, I made a car that's driving through here. You know, I'd modify quake so it's I actually modified doom once to make it so, so that the bad guy looks like a car driving around but I, it would inspire me I'd be like I can do this nowadays I actually find the more visually impressive games a little less inspiring and a little less impressive in certain ways because so much money stuff in them they have huge huge staffs of people and it's like they have one person who's working on one element for for weeks or months, and it's just it's impressive. But I don't have those type of patience, and it's less impressive to me that it's like anybody with enough time and money can create something like that. Where something like Doom, it's like it's just something I can do. It inspires me. It's like I, I could never make one of these AAA games that are out today by myself or even with a small group of people. I'd have to work for a big company. I'd have to have a lot of time, a lot of money, and a lot of patience. And, and it's just, it's impressive visually and, and the game is impressive, but it's not as inspiring to me because I'm not inspired. I don't look at those games and go, wow, I want to go home and make something like that. But I look at these games from the 90s, and especially when they got into 3D stuff and they had 3D models, but they were lower poly stuff. I remember in, in a level of Duke Nukem, I 
I don't remember, I don't think it was a mod, I think it was one of the original, because there was some official uh, expansion packs or whatever. There's one where there's a fire truck there, and it's so blocky, and which is textures on it, and it's like barely like a fire truck, but I could tell that's supposed to be a fire truck. There was another game in the 90s, a Spider-Man game that I, I also liked that was on, I think, the PlayStation, and it's like, it's just... The buildings were just, you know, blocks with textures on them. And I understand, and and a lot of people will disagree with me on this, and, and I'm not saying that the newer stuff isn't impressive, but I find that stuff just as impressive, just in a different way. Uh, I find both the new AAA games and the old uh, successful games inspiring and, and impressive, but in their own ways. But for me, it's like, I can look at something and go, oh, wow, they created this and I know it's supposed to be a building I know it's supposed to be a truck even though it's like three blocks with some textures it's like it's like the fact that they were able to make something that I can tell what it is and it looked good in such a minimal fashion was impressive and the fact that I'd be able to look at that and go I can do that I can do that I look at like I haven't played any of the games, but I've seen videos of like the new Star Wars games, and it's like, wow, those almost look like real people, and it's rendering real time. It's amazing. You know, 20 years ago, you, you render something all night and get one frame, and it didn't look that good. Now we're doing it real time on hardware? That's a, a, a crazy. But I also am not going, wow, that makes me want to make a game. And there are people out there who do. They look at that, and they aspire to that. The thing is, you get a job working on a game like that, you're not really working on the game you're working on your aspect of the game, which back in the day, they had people who, you know, like John Romero was was primarily a level designer, where John Carmack was writing the, the engine. Uh, they had different jobs, but it's like, you still, it's like he created levels. He created levels, he, the entire level was pretty much all John Romero, you know, when he created a level, you know, and they had an art guy who did all the art, but it's like, nowadays, it's like you'll have like a whole team, from my understanding, a whole team of people working on certain things. It's like, your job is to make this truck. You know, and it's like, yeah, you made an impressive truck, but it's like, all you did was that truck. I'm sure they do more than one object, but it's, and I'm not insulting. I'm amazed, amazed by uh, current games and what they're able to accomplish. It's just less impressive to me when you have hundreds of people spending lots of money and lots of hours doing these things where back in the day, I feel like Doom was just as impressive for its time and it was created by four guys in a room, you know? Um, so that's my thoughts. You can agree or disagree. Uh, and again, I'm not, I'm not criticizing either side of them. I'm just saying there's different ways to be impressed and different ways to be inspired. And I'm more inspired. I'm impressed by the AAA games, and, but I'm also impressed by what they were able to accomplish 20, 25 years ago. But I'm more inspired by the older games because that's something I could do. I can create something like that on my own or with the help of a few friends. Like maybe I'm not good at art, but I can I can create the levels and I can create um, the game. I can write the code. Maybe someone else can is is a good artist and they can create they they can create the sprites, but they don't know how to create the other stuff. But they still have a huge part in the game and it's something that they can do. So and there's still games like that out there. There's still you know well it's like I mean look at like Mind Test and Minecraft. Um, I, those games are not as visually uh, as amazing, but think about all the people who use those games and create amazing things because of how simple they were. If, if Mind Test or Minecraft were as complicated as these big AAA games like, like that Star Wars game, I don't even know what it's called, people wouldn't be able to create stuff in it and people create amazing things. So it's that simplicity of the design opens up the doors to more people to create amazing things. So instead of having just one amazingly looking thing, maybe fun to play that some company made, making the game simpler opens the door up to more people to be creative and create more creative things. Maybe not as visually creative, but, but more to it. And it keeps it ongoing. Um, just a thought. Just a thought that I don't think a lot of people think about. They just look at new games and they're like, wow! Especially gamers. Uh, and, and I'm sure there's people out there listening to this now. And, and I mean this in the kindest way. But And, and, and I'm not talking about just like... Uh, this is going to sound insulting. Um, gamers, in my mind, are the lowest level of computer people. Well, maybe a step above your standard IT guy that you have at the office. Um, 
And what I mean by that, you can be an amazing programmer and be very smart with computers and play games, but there's so many people out there that consider themselves gamers that know absolutely nothing about computers. They know absolutely nothing. They know how to maybe install and set up their video card and drivers, and that's about it. Uh, but they act like they're these computer geniuses because they know how to do that and they're gamers, but they're really just gamers. Uh, and, and those are the people I'm talking about that are just lowest level of if you want to even consider them computer people uh, and I'm not talking I'm not just saying because you like games or you, you, you enjoy games you can consider yourself a gamer and still be good with computers I'm just saying that majority of those people are uh, I look at them uh, in a not very um, good light when it comes to representation of people who consider themselves because they tend to be overly vocal about how great they are with computers when they're really can't write a single line of code and, and you really know nothing about computers, there's a difference between computer usage and and actually knowing about computers, which is a whole other topic I should talk about. Anyway, think about that. Think about, I, I, I inspire, I, I inspire you. I, I hope that I am inspiring you to go and look at these old games and be in, inspired by them. Like, and, and, and I'm just thinking about basically all the games in the late 90s, especially late 90s, early 2000s was an incredible time where we were getting into 3D stuff, but things were still simple. Even like the original Tomb Raider and stuff like that, uh, which I only played a little bit of, but just games like that where they were 3D, low poly, but they were able to create so much. Be inspired. Whatever it is that inspires you, whether it's the AAA games that are of today or the AAA games where they called that back then, I don't know, but the, the, the amazing games of, of 20 years ago, be inspired to create something. Whatever it is that, create, that inspires you to create something, create something, and, and hopefully you create something that inspires other people to be creative and add to your creation and create something new from your creation or even create something completely new but being inspired by your work. Be inspirational. And visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the K. Also check out my Patreon, patreon.com forward slash melix1000. Thank you so much for listening to me, and I hope that you have a great day.